Kenneth, he kicks off and he says, what's your view of using Heiganashi as a chart style? Is it helpful or is it annoying? And why? And this, I love these kind of questions because it, if I just said, yeah, I just dismiss Heiganashi, blah, blah, blah. It wouldn't really give you the kind of in-depth answer that you are entitled to. So if this is going to drag out a little bit, I think you'll find it worthwhile. Okay, so when you look at the Investopedia definition of a Heiken Ashi, you'll see here that a Heiken Ashi actually means an average bar. So rather than showing just the open, the high, the low, and the close, as you would see on a traditional bar chart or a traditional candle chart, what you're actually seeing is it's almost like a weighted moving average where some parts of the price development has more emphasis than other parts of the price development. So with a weighted, with an, with a standard moving average, every single uh, sample within the the uh, sample space, say a 20 period moving average, each of the 20 periods weighs the same as each other. But when you have an exponential moving average, you will see that the, the most recent prices will have more emphasis on, on the calculation than the, uh, the data that is plotted, say, 19 periods ago. So period one, two, and three will have more emphasis than, say, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And so the, the Heikenashi is designed around the same sort of idea not that we should have more emphasis on certain price data, but here that we are trying to smooth out the time series by creating a, an artificial uh, calculation. So uh, when, you, when, you are, when you're studying Heikenashi, you will very quickly realize that the chart looks a lot smoother without the sort of uh, counter moves that you are often seeing in a typical candle chart. And proponents of Heiken Ashi, they argue that it is a nice way of not being fooled out of a trending move. Um, in particular, you are more likely to stay with your position and not being tempted to exit position because of uh, false signals. Now, my argument here is that, and I want to quote here, it's important to note that the current price shown on a normal candlestick chart will be the current price, while when you are dealing with Heikenashi, you may see two prices. You'll see the real price and you will see the Heikenashi price. Now, my concern here is that if you are looking at a side-by-side -side comparison of say the DAX this morning, I've circled something that I want you to be aware of. To the right, you will have the Heikenashi chart and to the left, you'll have the normal candlestick chart. And my concern with the Heikenashi chart is that it doesn't allow me to be alerted to those small subtleties that I as a point and click trader are acutely tuned into. And so for example, this morning, when I look at the, uh, the normal standard technical chart on the DAX or candle chart, what I'm seeing here alerts me to the possibility of this market actually undergoing a, uh, if I, actually undergoing the possibility of a short position. However, if I was confronted with this kind of chart that we're seeing over here, i.e. the Heikenashi chart, I would instantly have concluded, well, we've had four or five bars up. And as a result of it, this is just a little counter bar, and I would assume that the market is going to continue higher. And I suppose that is what Heikenashi actually wants you to believe. It wants you to say, well, look, this is a smooth trend, and you can safely jump on board. And if you compare that to what you're seeing over here, sure, you're seeing one, one single counter bar, 
but you don't see that counterpart over here. And the reason is, sorry, the, the reasoning here is that Heikenashi wants you to be protected or insulated against being fooled out over here. Am, am I making myself clear so far? Does this make sense to you, what I'm trying to get at? Good, all right, yes, 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 excellent, good, good, good. All right, so my argument here is, look, you have a very beautiful trend downwards here. This is during the night, so don't worry if you didn't catch it. I didn't catch either, we do have to sleep. But when you're looking at what's going, what's taking place over here, which is roughly over here, it doesn't concern me that we have two green bars here because I will still have an inflection point up here which is at the top of this bar that has made a new low, this bar here. So it doesn't bother me at all to see two green bars because I know from experience that when you see counter moves in a trend on a five minute bar, counter trends tends to last somewhere between two, three, four and five bars. And you're seeing here a very typical standard setup, two counter bars, two counter bars, three counter bars, one counter bar. And neither of these counterbars are in any shape or form able to take out a prior swing high. Prior swing high. We don't even get up there. Therefore, I reject the, the, the Heikenashi on that merit because I don't think it adds anything to my trading. But I do think that it subtracts something from my trading because I'm not being alerted to the possibility of a trend change. And this is where philosophy comes in, because when I'm looking at this chart here, I'm thinking, well, hang on, you, you have a high and then you have a secondary high. Now I see this as a, a typical high, lower high. Sure, I'm getting the same picture over here, but what actually Heike Nashi is trying to tell me here is, don't be worried about this. Don't be worried about this red bar here because we're going to go back up again. While on a standard chart, I'm alerted to first one, oops, one red bar and a second red bar, and I don't see any meaningful progress above this area here, which I know is resistance. And when I then see what I call a red bull, a, a, a red bear bar, a bear bar, I know that all red bars are bear bars, but the the distinction between this one and the one we're seeing over here is this. And in my world, there's a very big difference between these two. This is the kind of the one I want to be short of. This is the kind of the one where I'll be hoping I'm not short because there's too much indecision here. There's the, the, the wick, the tail suggests to me that actually there might actually be more bias then the chart will really let me know. But because I'm using a smoothed bar or smooth candle, it withholds some of the truth. When you look at the DAX just a, a few moments later, again, when we came into the room this morning, we were beginning to short this bar here. But I would never have done that over here on a Heikenashi chart. Therefore, I don't think that Heikenashi adds anything to my trading edge. Now, you could say, well, look, if it doesn't add anything to it, doesn't mean you couldn't use it. No, that's true. You could still use it. But if you feel as a trader that it actually subtracts from your edge, actually makes your job harder, well, then that's a very different proposition. So, for me, Heiken actually shows a distorted view of the reality in order to aid the trader and give him or her an edge. It has been shown to smooth the trend very much like a moving average do. It has the advantage of giving the appearance of trend akin to what a Renko chart does by removing the noise of the market. Now, my feeling on the topic of, is that Heikenashi attempts to help the trader to stay with the trend by filtering out some of the noise, such as counter bars in the trend. But the problem that I have are several. I don't like trading through a filter. So the reason I would not use a moving average is the same reason that I don't want to use a filtered candle chart. 
I actually do want to see the noise because to me it isn't noise. To me it's incredibly valuable information because during a downtrend I tend to use the counter bars as entry point to jumping on board by adding to my position. If these were now filtered away I would be stripped of that edge.